Hello, I am Fabien Giraud and today I want to show you one of the latest exciting IMC module which is called, called Van RAM, Virtual Application Network Resource Automation Manager. So in fact with this module what we want to do is really to change the way to manage the network. In fact we don't want to continue to manage the physical configuration of the devices but we want more to manage network services and give these services to end users. So to do this we can use VAN Resource Automation Manager. So I will connect to my IMC server to show you this exciting module. So let me connect. Okay, so VAN Resource Automation Manager is under the Service tab and Resource Automation Manager. So when I click on Quick Start, you will see the different steps to configure your resource automation management. So you can see first, define your network model, I will explain. Two, define your network. Three, define your zones. Four, define your tenant. Five, define some service model. Six, put in place a service catalog and finally seven deploy services. So let's begin. So the first step in RAM if, is to import the devices on which you want to orchest orchestrate your network configuration. So in my example, this is a very simple example, I imported three different switches and one server. But just remember that it is not only for switches. With RAM, you can also automate the deployment to, of course, switches, routers, load balancers, firewalls, and so on. So here is my zones with my is my network, sorry, with my devices. Second step is to define some network zone. So. For example, with these three devices, I define a zone which is called my ETSS zone. So let's show you the configuration. So in this zone, I put three parts, Compute Distribution, Compute Core, and Data Center, with one switch in Compute Distribution, one switch in, in Compute Core, and one switch and the server in the Data Center. Okay. And also, here, I define the endpoint connection, where my users will be, my end users will be connected at the end. So here you can see a specific icon, a cloud, in fact. And if I select this, you will see the endpoint connection list. So it is on this device, and I selected these three specific ports. Okay, this is the second step. After that, I define a kind of network service. So you can see this here. And if I select this, I click on modify. So in fact, I added a um, service I called mail, link, and global LAN access. So in fact, with this network service, I want to give access first to the LAN, of course, and then to the link server and to the email servers to some new users. So to do this, in fact, I put the same three different parts, distribution, Compus Distribution, Compus Core, and Data Center. And in each part, I put a, some kind of virtual devices in order to put templates on these devices. So for example, I added a switch in the campus distribution, another switch in the campus core, and in the data center, one switch and one server. And for this kind of virtual switch, I made some configuration. For example, here, if I click on configure, I can see that first on this kind of device in the campus distribu distribution, I want first to create a VLAN, VLAN 10. And then I want also to, on the port, allow VLAN 10 on the trunk, of course. And also I want to put some QS 
here for my links specific application, link and exchange. So you can see TCP 25587 and TCP389. And some specific commit trait, which is this one. Well, this is a very simple example. And also on the other devices, I put some ACL, some VLAN configuration on the port, so always permit VLAN 10. And for example, here I want to prevent my end users to connect to my loop pack network, which is this one. So destination IP is my loopback network and source IP is my endpoint connection IP. These are parameters automatically filled in by IMC. And on the final switch here, I put also some ACL on this port configure, for example, here to allow the traffic from my endpoint connection. So by default, I prevent every, every connection on my link server except for my clients. So this is why I added this kind of rules in my ACL. Okay. So now I have configured my physical network zone and my in kind of virtual service model. So now I have a service catalog here you can see and I can select in the service catalog in the service catalog the network service I want to give to my users. So to do this before I need to define some tenant which are really my users and to associate these users to the endpoint connection. For example, I have a new support team coming to my company and I know they will be connected on the endpoint connection I defined in the first step. So I associated this support team to my connection point here. You can see here support. So this is the con endpoint connection I first defined. So now let's go to the service catalog to show you the result. So if I say click here, so first I will ping one of my client, which IP address should be at the end, this one. So presently this shouldn't work. Yes, it's okay. So let's deploy my network service. I select my service here. I select my tenant, so my, my support team. Okay, ETSS zone, it's okay. And now I will have a new window at the top, the virtual network service, and at the bottom, the physical network zone. So you can see the switches put this here, the switch is here, virtual switch is here, and here the real physical devices. So now I can calculate the possible path to configure. So in my case, I have only one path because it is very simple, but you can imagine that there can be, they can be uh, multiple paths and you can choose on which path you want to deploy the configuration. So I click on OK. And then I have two options. I can simulate the deployment to verify if there is some conflict with the present configuration on the network devices, or I can say I know what I do, so I force the deployment of the service. So let's do it slowly. I will simulate. So I click here, and you will see that on the first device there is no issue. And the second one, there is no issue, but on this one, it seems that I have some conflicts. So why? Let me check. I can right click here, configure, and using this, I can see the conflict. So apparently there is already an ACL which can be conflicting with the one I want to deploy. So I know that the present ACL deny every traffic except from the allowed clients and no, and so I know that it is normal and I can deploy 
my configuration and add my rule to this ACL. So I can close this one. And now I can select the deploy service. I will put a name, for example, my test of today. I want to do it immediately. So I don't need to check conflict because it is down and I know there are some normal conflict and put an end for the lease, let's say next week. I click on OK and now my network service will be deployed. So you will see in a few seconds that the network service should be deployed successfully. Yes, deployed success. So let me check. Yes, my client is now accessible. I can, for example, connect through RDP to it and verify I have access to my link server. Okay, so I will connect using MSTSC. Okay, okay. Okay, and let me try to ping my link server to verify that I have access. Okay, so my uh, link server is 10, 10, 152, 108. Let me check. So you can see that from this client, I have access to my link server but since my computer here is not allowed, you will see that from this one, I don't have access. So the ACL is also well applied on the final switch. And just to show you how many command lines you, don't, you didn't have to enter to configure this network service, you can check here, if you click here, and verify the deployment details, you will be able to see all the different steps, configuration steps made by IMC. And then if I verify here, I have some details. And moreover, for example, if I check here, you can see all the command lines which you should have to enter to configure only this ACL. So instead of perhaps 40 or 50 common lines, you only add to make, I think, three or four clicks. So this is really new and really, really useful for you, for the network administration. And finally, just to finish with this, there are also some performance monitoring specific with this module. For example, you can view directly the different performance monitoring for the different tenants. So global for all the tenants here. Okay. And after that, if I select, for example, my support team, I can see the bandwidth usage of my support team, these kind of things directly from here. I didn't click, yeah. Okay, so I can see the list status, okay. Turn on bandwidth, top five bandwidth usage, and so on. And also for performance monitoring, directly from the deployed service, you can easily configure, if you have the SHM module, you can easily configure a new SLA for this service. In fact, here, you have a direct link to configure SLA. So automatically the network devices are added to the SLA. And so you just have to select the uh, 
indexes you want to, man to monitor, the KPI you want to monitor, for example CPU usage, interface performance, and so on. And after that, you can select the devices on which you want to monitor these indexes. OK. And the same for performance on interfaces. And automatically, the SLA will be added. Just to show you the result, I uh, already did it in the past on this one. And so I can show you the result by clicking here. So let's see, for example, monthly SLA. And so you can see all the days on which it was excellent. Days I have no data. And also for each index, KQI, I can see the corresponding value. OK. And for example, I have some good example here with mean time to repair, mean time before failure, and so on. In terms of response time, you can see I have some bad index here and so on, with the evaluation map with average, minimum, maximum, and the else here. OK, so I hope you enjoy this uh, demonstration. And so I really want to thank you for your attention and hope you see you soon in some new videos. Bye bye.